Round 11 of the 2010 Arla Elite Series season took place at the North Wilkesboro Speedway in North Carolina. Bernie Fellows won the pole in his number 188 part-time entry. He also drives the number 250 entry for Riggs Motorsports in the Arla Thunder Trucks. But unfortunately for Fellows, he didn't hold the lead for very long. Here comes Ifali Enemy on the 139 to sweep around the 188 to take the lead. This is Anamiha's first race back in about uh, three or four weeks. Whenever he has made a race, he has usually done very well. Caution 1 flew in lap 6. Debutant driver Jeremy West is about to have a very rude introduction to the Arla Elite Series. He washes up the track into Harry Anola and Olivier Martinez, taking all three cars into the, into the wall. Jeremy West would drop out of the race. While the field was lining up, Joel Rodriguez gets into the 17 of Joseph Howard and turns the 17 car into the wall. Fortunately, nobody else hit him, but I doubt uh, Howard appreciated that. Also under this caution, Todd Stater's engine catches fire. After several great runs, including a win at Mansfield, uh, Stater's luck finally runs out. Hopefully this won't be a recurring problem in the following weeks. This has easily been the best season of Stater's career. Yafali Anamiha led on the restart with Eric Jackson in second, Bernie Fellows in third, Kurt Walker and Andy Pearson round up the top five. Jackson obviously got a much better start than the 139, and coming off of turn two, he gets a run to the inside, and he's going to sweep around the 139 for the lead. Here comes Bernie Fellows trying to take second back. Caution two, flew in lap 15, Shane Lake washes up the track and pinches Amy Harrison into the uh, 15 of Rachel Gonzalez, sending the 102 spinning. Harry Nola hits the 102, and he hits the pit wall, driver's side first, and gets up into the air. Let's take another look at that. Anola tries to avoid the wreck, but he doesn't move far enough to the inside, and he just slams into the pit wall and does a few barrel rolls in the air. That was a very nasty hit, but luckily those water barrels were there, and the 159 bounced off the wall, allowing that energy to dissipate. However, we don't know about Anola's medical condition. Siju Dijau was also caught up in this wreck and was forced into the pits. The race was red flagged for about 30 minutes and when everything restarted, Eric Jackson was still the leader. Yafali Anamiha gets a great start and gets around to the inside of the three coming down the back straight away. Anamiha is going to take the lead back. Caution 3 flew shortly after the restart. Leslie Riggs trying to race her teammate Sean Donnelly gets into turn 1 a little too hard and takes both cars into the wall. And then to add insult to injury, the 50 bumps the 08 one more time. I don't know if there are any problems between the two, but nonetheless, it never looks good when you wreck your own teammate. Once again, Yafali Anamiha leads on the restart, Eric Jackson hangs on to second, Bernie Fellows still runs third. And yet again, the caution flies shortly after the restart, while uh, coming down the back straightaway, Dale Underwood gets into the 01 of Lucas Hunter, and then the 10 of Jared Anderson spins the 03, taking him into the wall, along with... Hunter. While the field was taking the yellow, Joseph Howard decides it's his turn to spin somebody and sends the 67 of Brenda Riggs for a ride. Riggs was not too happy about this and certainly made it clear over her radio. Eric Jackson led on the restart. He actually took the lead away from uh, Anamiha during that short green flag run. Anamiha then took the lead back, but he would immediately be challenged by pole sitter Bernie Fellows. Fellows is going to try to lead more than one lap this time around. Caution 5 flew on lap 36. Coming off of turn 2, Nami Mora pinches Siju Dijau into Aaron Cruz, sending both cars into the wall and spinning down the track. Dijau claimed over his radio that the move was intentional. Those two have a bit of a history off the track. Joseph Howard is going to spin another car under the yellow flag. This time he gets into the back of Lucas Hunter and turns him around, while a bit further up, Rip Tyler spins the 08 of Sean Donnelly. Howard was called to the hauler, and Tyler was given a warning. Everyone pitted under the yellow except for Brenda Riggs and a few others. There, you saw Kyle Eckerton uh, on the inside. He had a bit of a mechanical problem coming to the restart. Riggs leads in her damaged 67 car with Shane Lake in second and Scott Morales running third. Caution 6 flew in lap 42. Coming off turn 2, Lucas Hunter turns the 08 of Sean Donnelly into the slow car of Kyle Eckerton, sending both cars spinning. And then Donnelly goes and does that. That's the second time a Riggs Motorsports car has gone into that wall, the first being Marianola. 
While under yellow, Eric Jackson decides to stop in front of the whole field, and naturally he gets turned around by Andy Pearson, who causes a big, big stack up. It looks like Jackson may have had a mechanical problem, but I don't know why he would just stop in front of, in front of the whole field like that. Once again, the front runners do not hit. Brenda Riggs leads on the restart with Shane Lake behind her. Lake gets a great start, and he's going to get a run on the inside of the 67 coming off of turn two. Lake takes the lead, and then Brenda Riggs decides to come into the pits under green. She's going to lose a couple of laps doing so. You might have seen a little smoke up in turn three. Kurt Walker spins Amy Harrison into the pits, then when he tries to merge back onto the track, he sweeps across the front bumper of the 63 of Kevin Monroe, and takes himself and Lake Rell into the wall. Arla officials called him to the hauler for this move. Here is Scott Morales running in second, several car lengths behind Shane Lake. Ever since winning at Daytona, Morales hasn't had the greatest of luck, however, he's still been able to hang around the top 10 in points. That 76 team has been really hungry for a good result, and it looks like that might come tonight. However, Morales is running on worn tires, and he would soon fall victim to the M&J cars of Jeb Klinger and Bobby Porto. You'll notice that the 64 car is running without any sponsorship decals. A uh, new United States law uh, prohibits tobacco companies from sponsoring sports teams, and so the Mortar Cigarettes logos had to come off of that car. Jeb Klinger, soon after clearing Morales, is going to challenge Shane Lake for the lead with the help of the uh, lap 37 car. That is Brenda Riggs ahead of this pack, uh, trying not to go two laps down. Klinger is going to be 76 in August, but it's very clear that he still knows how to get the job done. Here is Yafali Anamiha, still running inside the top 15, until his car suddenly slows down on him. He was doing very well in his first race back after DNQing several weeks in a row, and now he falls out of contention. 